CNN piece says, digital blackface needs to be done away with. It's the phenomenon of white people using black memes and or gifs to react to things on the internet, which has become common practice on Twitter and elsewhere. What about black people using white people and gifs? Well, most of the just... memes, they're saying that most of the memes, most of the gifs are black people, the cool ones, because, you know, we're very expressive. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We're very, we're, so they're saying that they don't want, out of one side of the mouth, they're saying Oscar's so white and representation matters. <laughs> and out the other side of the mouth, they're saying don't use memes with black people. Yeah, this is some minstrels, minstrelty right here. This is frustrating. Yeah, it's it's, it's so like, it, am, I, am I cool? Am I not? Like, are we yeah. cool? Or are we not cool? We cool. They're just crazy. So we ain't cool. So we're not cool, but we're cool. No, we no, are. I'm not cool. cool, but we're not cool over here. But we're cool. No, right, cool. I'm gonna just let you know, Glidy. <laughs> we're cool. There's the left. The, the leftists are they're just nuts. That's all. That no, is. Yeah, I know. We I'm cool messing lossy. I'm messing lossy. Yeah, it's, it's, we, it's, we can eat ribs together. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's 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 crazy, man. And it's serious. Like, don't think that they're joking. Because sometimes Gladys thinks, oh, it's crazy. Shit, they are serious. They ain't playing with this shit, man. They're fucking serious. They were talking about this for a long time. You just guys just haven't known. They've been bitching about this for a long time. It's exhausting, man. Black people wear you out, man. They this is some nomadic oppression. <laughs> we're gatekeeping gifts now. They wear you out, man. Meme stomatic institutions. Meme <laughs> stomatic. <laughs> Yo, we we wear people, we wear people out. And we wonder why nobody wants us around, man. We we wonder. We'd like to think that the ugly history of blackface is behind us, but before you head off for that self-congratulatory victory lap, I'd like to introduce you to a term you might not be familiar with. It's called digital blackface. Yes, it seems America's oldest form of cultural vulturism has updated itself for the social media age. What is digital blackface, you ask? It is the increasingly common practice of using the cover of online anonymity to disguise your true identity by playing racial dress up. I'm Dara Star Tucker, and this is The Breakdown. Now, digital blackface can be done in a number of ways, often by uploading a deceptive profile picture or not using one at all, and simply announcing in the comments that you're black and using that false identity as a way to bolster your position around the issue of race. It's generally done to justify behaviors that might not be considered racist if a black person were co-signing them, as in, I'm black and I don't think behavior X is racist at all. This practice was on full display in November of 2020, when former Pennsylvania Republican congressional candidate Dean Browning tweeted from his account, I'm a gay black guy, and I can personally say that Obama did nothing for me. My life only changed a little bit, and it was for the worse. It was then discovered that he thought he was tweeting from his burner blackface account, under which he had posted several racist and sexist tweets in the past. Jesus Christ. a convoluted explanation for the whole debacle, but the damage had already been done, and he lost his primary bid. This is perhaps the most extreme example of something that happens on a much smaller scale quite often on social media. Post a comment. And this woman is serious. She is so fucking serious. Like if you sleeping on her and you think that well, this will just go away, just give it some time, Jill. It'll go away. I hope you fucking are thinking like that, Gladys. I hope you Gladys are thinking like that, man. You gotta take this shit serious because this is something that will soon you won't. All the landmines that Gladys operate on in public can't say this, can't do that, can't say this. Don't get mad if I do this. Who's really out here shucking and jiving? <laughs> it seems as this woman lives for drama. I don't know. I just, it's just, it's, it's she's serious, man. 
yeah, sent her a video it. about race, claiming to be a black person who doesn't have a problem with certain racist language or behavior, and chiding your fellow black people for being victims, sheep, pawns, whatever. The second form of digital blackface is a bit more insidious. It's more common with younger people on social media, and that's the adoption of what's known as AAVE in online spaces. AAVE is an acronym for African American Vernacular English. It's an informal dialect created by African Americans that has evolved over time. It contains a lot of the slang that ends up being popularized once it hits the mainstream. As with real life blackface, the commenter isn't necessarily trying to present themselves as an actual black person. Nowadays, they adopt the language or cadence of African Americans to appear more edgy or street smart than they actually are. In short, they do it because it's cool. The third form of digital blackface is usually done innocently enough. It has to do with the use of emojis or gifts of African Americans to express various emotions online. Stanley from the office rolling his eyes, Raven Simone chewing gum furiously. There's usually no harm meant by it, but when it's used by people outside of the black community, it can perpetuate negative stereotypes of black people as overly emotional, aggressive, highly animated, or buffoonish. There is a direct through line to the era of minstrelsy, where black people were used as stand-ins to express a broad range of emotions that white people weren't comfortable expressing themselves. The important thing to remember is that blackface, whether done in the real world or online, doesn't necessarily have to possess ill intent in order to cause harm. Once you know better, you do better. In part two, I'll talk about a close cousin of blackface called so black not, fishing. Not only you may is not she think blackface memes and gifts, she's also gatekeeping a bonics. When I'm talking like yeah. this, that's like digital the blackface, not mean. Come they are like, Jack. so fucking serious that y'all in trouble, man. Y'all are in trouble. You heard me? <laughs> like, with, 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 you ever, how many of y'all know how pythons, like pythons, they don't really, like they squeeze you right, but when you exhale and you inhale, then they squeeze again. So it's like you're really by breathing, you're actually killing yourself. Because when you inhale, they squeeze, and then now it's harder to take another breath, and then it's, it, it progressively gets harder to take the next breath because each time you inhale, they squeeze more. And um, yeah. We that's what we're doing to y'all, man. Like there's every... no brakes. <laughs> there's we're no like... reverse gear. <laughs> yeah, man. The train only uh, goes in one direction, and they blow up the track problem. behind so, it. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you, you, and and I hope you don't think this is a joke. Hope you don't think it's just you gonna wake up tomorrow and it's gonna be. Nah, this ain't going nowhere. <laughs> It's time for the mic drop on each show by going deep on one topic affecting our community and hopes we can all learn a little more. Blackface has gone digital, y'all. That's a sentence I never thought I would say, but I guess it was just a matter of time. When I was coming up, AI or artificial intelligence, man-made computers and machines was something you only heard about or saw in movies or on television. And we had a favorite because for the most part they were cute and they were here to help. So AI for me was this or this. Uh, how about a little of this? There you go. And of course, this. A little Optimus Prime. These were the ideas of AI that most of us grew up with. So I don't know about you, but I couldn't wait for real life AI to come along. I mean, sure, sometimes they gave us this, but I mean, you know. He was a hero in the second movie. He also gave us kindergarten cops, so I was good with it. What skinny glasses wearing kid wouldn't want to have a Cyberdyne Systems T-800 to hang out with? Well, guess what, people? AI is here, and it looks like this. Yeah, <laughs> meet FN Mecca, the world's first AI virtual rapper. Now, I don't know if he's got bars. I'm going to go ahead and assume he doesn't. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's a boy. What a technology rock. Digital blackface, yeah. and you may have heard of it. The Slow Factory Foundation posted this on Instagram recently, explaining exactly what it is. They say it's an online phenomenon where white and non black people share um, gifts and photos of black folks to express emotion or reaction to anything 
on the internet. But they're hardly the first to bring this up. We've seen Refinery29 articles mm -hmm. and um, other articles from other magazines that have talked about this as back as 2017. Um, but it's come back up again because of the Oprah and Harry and Meghan interview and Oprah Winfrey's reaction to some of the things that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry were saying. And so people have been using memes and gifts of her facial expressions and reactions during the sit down. But as we're coming to learn, uh, by some people are saying that doesn't mean you should always be using them hmm. um, just because they're being put out there. Well, this is all right. Well, let's get into this. Uh, we have two doctors with us, Dr. Uh, Aaron Smith. Of the <laughs> Fucking losers. <laughs> I mean, golly, man. And this is why I talk about gliders the way I do. Because, yo, you couldn't get away with this in Mexico. We wouldn't be able to do this in El Salvador. We wouldn't be able to do this in Ando. We wouldn't be able to do this in Saudi Arabia. We wouldn't be able to do this in Qatar or fucking China or fucking Indonesia. We wouldn't be able to do this nowhere. We wouldn't be able to do this shit in fucking Nigeria. Or fucking Uganda. The only place we can do this shit is Great Britain. Um, <laughs> fucking America, maybe Sweden, you know, places like y'all countries, Iceland. <laughs> What's up, Fabian, man? What's going on, man? Hey, how's it going? I just what settled you, in. What you think about digital blackface, man? I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's just another step in the same direction. It's just the next the next iteration of the same script. I mean, it's the same script as like school integration, you know. <clears throat> Segregation. No integration. <clears throat> yeah, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to have your own spaces. You're not allowed to. Not allowed to this. Not allowed to that. I mean, the reason. I mean, the fact that the fact that sun people are made the face of this. It's like it's. It's not just made. It's not tailored just to their material benefit. It's tailored to their psychology because they don't. We know it's typical not to self-regulate, to expect access to resources, not to question whether or not you deserve access to resources, regardless of whether it makes any sense that you have it. And so it's just a match made in heaven. These, these, these kind of scripts and pro like these people are being platformed. Like these sun people didn't just like build their own TV studio and their own t you know, entertainment empire and put themselves out there. They're being, put up as the face of these messages. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, um whew. it's just it's just I, I, I just think that you guys don't really know how much shit y'all are. The Department of Africology and African American Studies at Temple Ooh. University. Always great to see you, Doctor and Dr. Charles Gallagher. Uh, Chair of the Sociology and Criminal Justice Department over at LaSalle University. Hello, doctors. Hello. Hey. Um, I don't know exactly where to start. So, Dr. <laughs> Smith, is this a thing? Well, I think it's important to note that blackface is a thing. Sure. And the history of blackface really hasn't been reconciled in the country or for the people who were exploited and marginalized and culturally appropriated. I think that's the bigger issue. I think people like to prune a problem, but you got to get to the root and the truth to really find solutions. And I guess the thought is, if they're calling it digital blackface, it's the fact that you're using black people as an emotion, and that might be uh, the concern here, Dr. Smith? Yeah, I think it goes beyond engagement. When there's not a comparable engagement in the real world, but then there's this overemphasis and overutilization of representation in a digital space. So I don't really think the memes are that big of a deal, but what the memes conjure up, what they trigger, and what they connect with, I think that history is why people are up in arms about this digital basketball face is the biggest threat to the nation. Who the hell is up in arms? These intellectual, these black intellect, the average black person, of course, you know, doesn't even know what digital blackface is. If you did a man on the street in fucking Harlem, nobody would know what the fuck you were talking about. But it's these intellectuals, these black intellectuals that push this shit, these white liberals, and of course, Y'all probably think the juice crew somewhere in there too, but this stuff gets pushed and then soon 
once it hits the mainstream of black people, then you make a meme and you go to work on Monday in your fucking um, little code that you put in the fucking clock in, don't work. And you go to bed and you say, um, my code doesn't work. He said, yeah, uh, step in my office, we gotta have a conversation. <laughs> I mean, it's the same as the futility of white flight. You know, they're just they're giving you nowhere to go. They're cornering you every, you know, every little corner of, of existence and behavior needs to be policed in this way. And gliders need to be put on notice in every possible way that can be, you know, devised. I mean, Archie Bunker badly. <laughs> yeah, oh, Archie Bunker, what, what would he do? What the fuck would Archie Bunker do? Say what the fuck he wants. That's what that's what gliders need to start doing. Just, 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 just say what you want. Say- you think Archie Bunker would say what the fuck he wanted nowadays? He fucking yeah, he would, and he'd, he'd yeah, he wind would. up he'd wind up dying in a jail cell. <laughs> you know something that might seem I'm more nuts. trivial Damn. to people who don't understand the full weight of the history. Yeah, what do you think, yeah. Dr. Gallagher? Oh, I think Dr. Smith is absolutely right. I, I I think it's all about context. I think Dr. Smith is that fucking black guy just fucking said a bunch of horse shit. And this white guy came what have said, I think he's absolutely right. Yeah, what do you think, yeah. Dr. Gallagher? Oh, I think Dr. Smith is absolutely right. I I, I think it's all about context. And, um, you know, I, I, the way I was kind of thinking about this when I've been reading it over the last few years about digital blackface is that um, you have people that are just thoroughly racist, that are using memes and, and gifting things where they know that these are these are drawing on the minstrel, that these things are out and out racist, they're doing it to hurt people, they're doing it basically to, to paint a portrait of a black community that's pathological. And then what happened with Oprah, I think, is a, is a little different. It is still a form of black facing, right? You're using uh, a black face to, uh, you're appropriating someone's right. black face for your own. But, but this is more about celebrity association, you, where people will remember that Oprah's like the number one, one of the number one people in the United States in terms of, of popularity. So it's almost like a colorblind narrative where people really love her. And so, and there's another generation of young people. I have daughters in college and they send these things. I don't know if it's Nicki Minaj or it's Beyonce, but they send them and it's benign. And they don't know, as Dr. Smith said, they don't know the history that when someone white well, sends yeah. out a motive. And then I think that there's a third category that I think is kind of interesting and, and it, that's playing out. And that is that, um, it's really among white collar professionals that are white and non-black where they would never think about using this because to, to send something out that could be perceived as being racist by a coworker or right. anyone. I need was, some help. They, then. they I mean, are going to self-censor themselves completely right. because it's the third rail, right? In corporate America, if you're basically perceived as being racist or engaging in racist means. Okay. If somebody sends me a text, Dr. Smith, and I respond with, Oh, maybe somebody looking happy about it. Yay. Or meet me at five o'clock down over in Rittenhouse Square. And I give him a thumb. Can I give him a, should my thumb be white? I think the key question is why would you choose a black thumb if you don't have a black thumb? Exactly. Okay. Damn. See, this is where you glad his mess up. He's basically now asking the pasty liberal and the black moron okay now tell me how to behave properly so i don't piss you off but he should really be saying man get the fuck out of here next segment <laughs> you know what i'm saying but he can't. yeah i mean that's the that's the basis of all this is like the 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 attitude the basic attitude that is set is that it's normal for gliders to have to grovel and ask permission or ask how to behave. And the point isn't that there's an answer and you can get the answer and you can adjust. The point is that it'll never be enough. The point is that you'll you'll never be able to behave well enough. And so you're just your life is just filled with dread and anxiety. And the uh, you know the the SWAT team is coming ever and ever and ever closer all the time and encroaching into ever more intimate spaces of and benign kinds of behavior and activity. And the thing about like sending those emojis and stuff like that, it's not, yeah, that's, I mean, the whole, the whole like reason why people do that, it's like part of it, I think there's a bit of a backlash about like some people have been made the object of such worship, have been so pedestalized and you can't, as a glider, you can't complain about that 
or else you get in trouble. And that's kind of part of why that's happening. It's like, look at how much we're going to pedestalize these people. And if you live around them, you know how they behave and you know the dissonance involved in that. But if you say anything about it, you're done. So I dare you, go ahead. So one way that a lot of gliders have been able to let off the steam of that dissonance is by exemplifying and accentuating the ways, the real ways that they see some people behaving in the world as distinct from the ways that they're deified, which has to do with just going online and spamming out real sun stuff, real sun emotion, real sun sentiment, real sun behavior. Yeah, yeah. And kind of adopting three, it. It's, it's a way of blowing off the street. In the middle of the street, you know, it, it clashes with the, uh, the black girl magic thing. Yeah, the whole like, we invented everything and we're geniuses and we invented spaceships and we invented language and bathing. And then you just look how people behave in their everyday lives and there's a dissonance there. So the things about the emojis and the like man on the street, like sun person in the ghetto reaction and stuff is just like, wait a minute. This is how these people that are supposed to be the ultimate cosmic geniuses actually behave. And the emoji stuff is just a way to like put it out there without, you know, without being terribly overt about it. Because of course, if you're, if you just say what you think, then you're in trouble. You're muted up. Are you saying that gliders are using these emojis and these, um, not emojis, these gifts and these memes that in a, in a concerted way? They're not just like, using the other popular memes most of the popular memes are black people it's not that it it depends i think that and it, well there's probably a lot it's there's probably both and there's probably a little bit of overlap between those two in either case i don't think it's entirely conscious but a lot of what i see people who are aware of the dis of the difference between the picture of some people that is being promoted and the real life sun people that they see on the street and how they behave, there's a dissonance there and it's uncomfortable because you're forced to believe the image. Whereas real life shows you that it's not accurate. So there's a, there's a psychological pressure involved in that. And so definitely part of this kind of thing, and I think the, th the reason that they're making a, an issue of this and trying to put the kibosh on it is because it's a way for people who see the truth to say something about it without being super overt about it. I think that's why they're, they're making this a new kind of uh, a category of, of thought crime to be you know, hounded down and hunted down and reported to the authorities and punished because a lot of gliders are using uh, sort of black coded memes as a way to let off the steam of that dissidence by saying, we all know how these people actually behave. It's like, oh, God damn it. Ain't nobody got time for that. You know, it's like, oh, shit, I might, I might fuck around and, and uh, populate and uh, colonize space in the second round. I might build some pyramids. Uh, shoot, I need some chicken. I need to get my nails did. But after that, shoot, I might build some new pyramids up in here. We, you know, people know. People obviously know that there's a dissonance between these images. We invented everything. We're the geniuses. We created language. The only reason you know how to wash your balls is because we came up from Africa and showed you. You know, it's like people know that this is bullshit. And so one way that people who do know that, who also know that they can't say what they know, one way that they say it is by using these images that do exemplify the reality. Mm, okay, and so... There's, a, yeah, there's also the other thing, too, of like, yeah, this is the popular thing. In order to be popular, you kind of act this way and take on these characteristics. But I don't think that's why they're turning it into this new category of, of, of crime. Yeah, um, hit, make sure you hit the PayPal Cash App Super Chat. We got 416 in the building. We got we got another 50 watching on Rumble. Nobody's hitting the Super Chat. Nobody's supporting this great content, man, other than the people that already have. Make sure you make sure you take a second to hit that PayPal, hit that Cash App, hit that Super Chat, man. Um, yeah, man, great, um, great um, black voice, Fabian, man. How would y'all rate Fabian's black voice, man, on a scale of one to ten, man? I'm good with that. What about memes then? I mean, and emojis yeah, and things like know, that. I, I have to wonder. I mean, I think Dr. Smith is just spot on. It's like. If I'm a, I'm a, a white middle-aged man, why would I be basically passing on a 20-year-old black female rapper? 
about something I'm feeling. It just to me, it's again, it's context. It's like, why would I be doing this? And what's interesting is when I was reading about it, it's also for people who um, do have an issue with it, they were saying it's the thing of using black people to express intense emotion about something, which kind of traces back. They said, why, yeah. you know, if you're excited, mm, yeah. why does it have to be a black person, you know, jumping up and down or snapping their fingers or moving their neck, um, that kind of thing. And that's what they're concerned about, constantly using black people as a way to express intense things, when in real life, a lot of black people feel like they can't be intense with their emotions because right. it's perceived mm, as a threat right. or perceived as... Oh, yeah, we see that a lot. <laughs> in real life, black people can't be intense with their emotions because it's perceived as a real threat. But in a few words, exactly what Fabian just said. I mean, like, literally, like, that's the opposite of everybody's everyday <laughs> observations of some people. I can't believe. And here's the thing. Watch it go completely unchecked. No one will even roll their eyes or no one even, like, like, and I know these people are woke, but no one even just, like, it's hard to not to No one even blinked at that one. <laughs> yeah, like what she said. How can you not, like, spit your water out at what she just it, said? They just sit there like trained seals, and they, or, 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 and they clap. And the, and the story before was, like, you know, two sisters having to be carried off of a plain log style because they're attacking everybody on it. <laughs> right, because the lady why, didn't run out of headphones. Yeah. They were saying it's the thing of using black people to express intense emotion about something, which kind of traces back. They said, why, yeah. you know, if you're mm, excited, yeah. why does it have to be a black person, you know, jumping up and down or snapping their fingers or moving their neck, um, that kind of thing. And that's what they're concerned about, constantly using black people as a way to express intense things, when in real life, a lot of black people feel like they can't be intense with their emotions because right. it's perceived mm, as a threat right. or perceived as doing too much. What would you say to that then, Dr. Smith, like where the it can sometimes cross over? Yeah, and I think it's really interesting that you said that because even the point about Oprah, people do view her as, you know, some type of celebrity that transcends color. Mm -hmm. But if you ask Oprah about her life, she's been a black woman all her life, and it's made a lot of impact in the doors that have been closed in her face and the way that she's treated. <laughs> doors have been closed in Oprah's face. This woman has her own network. She literally has her own network, and it's called OWN. She's one of the, she's one of, I think before what Mackenzie Scott divorced um, Jeff Bezos. Wasn't Oprah like the richest woman in the fucking country? <laughs> like, what the fuck? There are doors being slammed in Oprah's face? And he gets to say that unchecked? the point about Oprah, people do view her as, you know, some type of celebrity that transcends color. Mm -hmm. But if you ask Oprah about her life, she's been a black woman all her life. And it's made a lot of impact in the doors that have been closed in her face and the way that she's treated even as though even when she's rich. So a lot of people feel as though there's this level at which you can escape racism and escape race and be colorblind. But to the community that people are, you know, casting in this category, they don't feel that way. And it's interesting to see that they're not really seen, but they're being used at the same time. You know, one that I've seen for years now is the Michael Jordan crying. You know, if, if you yeah. want to, like Dr. Mm -hmm. Gallagher, you they know, put it on everything. Says, yeah. Uh, if I want to respond to, you know, I'm really upset about something. You see that sent by a lot of people. Right, and I think that you know, this again back to what Dr. Smith said. I think is 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 on target. Is that you know, it's it, it, you send this out, and and again, it's intent, right? So the context matters. But people is completely ahistorical. People don't understand that mm -hmm. the emotive black person, right? The over emotive black person, the sassy black person, right? The loud black person, right? These are tropes that have been used over and over in the minstrel and also on television shows. I mean, oh, you know, yes. go back to Urkel and, you know, Dynamite with JJ. I mean, they've been. Urkel. Oh. Yeah, that's how most black people act, yeah. like Urkel. This is, this is. Listen, man, I'm a son. I don't have to. This doesn't affect me. I will never meet, talk to a son person that will ever mention digital blackface to me in real life. But <laughs> you gliders will have to deal with this shit because the black intelligentsia and the liberal intelligentsia has fucking made this their new thing, man. Woo! Y'all in for it, man. You know, at, forever. And the fact that people. At the end of the day, aren't we just using a gif of another American?
Yeah, I know. It's just but, crazy. But I guess we're just so focused on how much different color everyone is. It's not us. It's them. No, yeah, my bad, my bad. Thank you. I These people you. are creating this shit out of These nothing. These people. You're creating this shit. This shit the, doesn't uh, exist. The uh, no, no, leftist the issue, Americans. Doesn't, doesn't mean it's not painful for people in that community to see it. So I guess, where do we go from here then? I guess just well, think twice or make sure you're, before you tweet stuff out. I don't know. I, it, I'm in the point now though, if someone says it's, it's offensive, like this a uh, couple groups and articles, I'm like, should we just shy away? I, I'm not, I'm gonna only send white gifs. I think impact. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> and then it comes, then here's the thing. 10 years from now, when they like have GIF, a GIF of the year or meme of the year, the most popular memes of this year, the 10 MTV, uh, the, the top 100 memes of 2029, the top 10 GIFs of 2030, and they're all white, then you're going to have these same some people coming back and bitching and moaning about how, why they're not being um, included in. <laughs> Careful. That's why they you see, yeah. By then, they just have to make sure all the memes can be can be black, but they just have to make sure that everybody involved in the show is black. All the everybody in the audience is because all the gliders went to jail for digital blackface, so they don't they're not involved. In, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Salute to um Vanessa, man. Vanessa coming through, man. He said mental illness is growing in the black community. Yeah, I, I mean, this is this is evilness. This is bullying. I wouldn't even call this mental illness. I would call this, this is bullying gliders. They know that gliders, they got gliders on the ropes. It's like when you gliders are on the ropes and they, their guards are down and they just, they, they have, they punch drunk. And we just, it, it, and the ref is knocked out. <laughs> the ref is knocked out. Nobody to stop the fight. We just wail it on gliders. <laughs> Just fucking giving it to y'all, man. That's what's going on, man. This is bullying, man. <laughs> this is like straight out the Marxist textbook. Just kind of bringing an issue that's not actually there. It's just media making up an issue at this point. Yeah, salute to Doug G, man. He says, hi, op. challenge time. I'll pony up. Not using images for memes? All right. Next, can we address double standards? I know. I crack me up too. Yeah, I mean, listen. Let's go on here and talk about a double standard. I mean, the, a collective gas. What do you mean double standard? And they'll know what you mean instantly if you said double standard on here. They would instantly know what you mean. Then they would talk about, well, the history and your privilege. And, of course, you would say that. Uh, the, the, the double stand. There's no such thing. Black people can't be double stand. <laughs> Listen, man, gliders know they can't talk like that. They can't use terms like double standard around some people. Um, is, is important versus intent. Mm -hmm. And I, I do want to say for point clarification, Mike, yep. the Jordan crying face is fair game. Michael Jordan <laughs> didn't want to be black his whole career. He oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a loser. God damn it. Black. Michael Jordan is... Michael Jordan, have you seen Michael Jordan's kids? He's the only basketball player that don't have beige kids. <laughs> He's the only... He's like the only basketball player that don't have kids that look like fucking Raven Simone and fucking like, little fucking half gliders, man. Just like the thought process of this man, like even what speaking. Are they talking about? That's what I'm saying. Like, what is this? <laughs> this guy's a weakling. He didn't want to, he didn't choose to be black. Like what? what do you mean choose to be black? He's the only NBA player who fucking owns a basketball team. None of these niggas making all this money ever fucking bought a team. Had enough sense to buy. He's the only one that had enough sense to buy a fucking team. What the fuck is this guy talking about? Because he, you know what? Wow. Let me tell you. Let me tell you how stupid. God damn, I hate some people, man. Um, I hate some people, man. Um, 
with sometimes, and I hate to say that, um, because people can hear that and be like, "See, I told you, man, he ain't doing people, man." But it's like, man, y'all, y'all are exhausting, man. Um, y'all are just really, really, really.